So it's Overland Expo weekend. Today's Thursday. I'm gonna head down and get as close as I can to Bend, Oregon. Highly doubt that I'm gonna go there, speed line straight there. I think it's like a six hour drive from where I'm at. So going to do that, but first I gotta start packing and everything. I'm gonna pack pretty light just because, well, it's Overland Expo and there's a lot of gear there that I wanna check out. So I don't plan on bringing a whole lot. I'm gonna do that, pack up, then we'll head out. All right, so I mentioned this in my last video where I went over my whole entire kitchen setup. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll link that above. Um, but anyways, just going to pack up everything on this bin right here, then toss in the 4Runner, and then we will head out. A couple of weeks ago, I went out to explore Mount Hood, and the whole purpose of that was for me to mark down some campsites just in case I'm in the area, which I'm about to be now as I'm heading down to Bend, Oregon for the expo. Um, so Thursday night, I'm gonna stay at one of those campsites. It's most likely gonna be the one at Trillium Lake just because really, really easy to get to. And as you can tell, by the time I get there, it's gonna be like pretty much midnight. So, but yeah, gonna do that. I'll see you guys there. So I had trouble finding camp last night just because it was really, really dark. There was a lot of people here and I didn't want to just drive in here and just have all my lights on. Luckily I found a spot though. So I'm about an hour and a half away from Redmond, going to uh, grab a few things before I head into the expo. So just arrived at the expo, gonna head in, um, check out some cool things. One that is the, Tim actually's got one of our awnings. He can speak about it. I mean, What's he uses it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So just left the expo. Um, I think the first round of today is just to walk around and just see what all the vendors are, kind of talk to some people, see all the deals. And then later on today, probably explore the area a little bit and then try to find some camp because I'm not going to be camping at the expo. And that is the plan. gonna head to a place called Pauline Falls. It looks like it's a short hike, so it shouldn't be taking too long. Gonna do that, then head back to Expo. There's some people I wanna meet, some people I wanna see um, and talk to as well. So that's the plan and then um, go find camp. So stay tuned for that. So just pulling up to Pauline Falls. Just looked it up, seems like a super short hike, so yeah, let's do this real quick and then um, get back to the expo. Surprisingly, nobody's here, which is, I guess, kind of nice. Let's go. Let's go to the lower falls. I'm gonna be honest you, Thai food and coffee and then going on a hike right after might not be uh, the best idea. Um, good news is I'm at the falls so that was a very quick hike and it's a lot larger than I thought so that's a plus All right, well, that was Pauline Falls. Got some photos, videos, and then back to the expo. See you there. 
I do need to take this detour real quick just because um, it's a viewpoint and I always take detours at viewpoints, especially when I see somebody with a telephoto lens. So uh, let's see what it looks like. Slight change of plans. The expo closes at five, which I did not know. I for some reason thought they closed at eight, but not the end of the world because the whole purpose of me going back there was to say what's up to some people and they're gonna be there tomorrow anyways. So it's, uh, like I said, I, I'll just say hi then. That means my whole day is now freed up to for me to do whatever I want. And I think right now I'm gonna go find camp, or at least find some sort of campsite um, relatively close to the expo so I can get there tomorrow morning uh, pretty early, um, try to beat the crowds. But yeah, so going to do that and I'll see you guys at camp. I think it's actually good that I'm here a little earlier than probably most people would be just because the expo is going on right now and I guess everyone, there's probably more people going out camping today, uh, today, tomorrow, and Sunday than there would be any other days, so. Somewhat don't want to be off the side of the road, I know that. I kind of want to be like within these trees um, for one shade and two it's kind of a dusty road so I don't want to really be parked up on the side and then wake up in the morning and the tent is like full of dust. There's a spot down here. Yeah let's do this. I'm gonna back up real quick and then I think we're gonna take this spot that's on the right. Um, um, I did want to give some sort of update on I want to say how I am doing my alternator charger. So, ignore the noise, that's the WeBoost little wire thing. But so back here, I have a Molly panel with the WeBoost mount there, and then I have the EcoFlow um, alternator charger that's mounted on there as well. And I am running the wire, it's not official or anything, but the wire is right here, super sturdy and everything. It just runs back here and kind of hangs. Um, I haven't had an issue so far, but I just installed it. So I'm doing that, running through this, just on the bottom of the floor. I mean, nobody really comes in the backseat anyways. <clears throat> and then it just runs through down here and then, then it runs through there and then it runs into the engine bay where it connects to the battery. Um, so it's a super easy install. It was actually not very hard. For me, the hard part was getting that mounted here and it wasn't really that hard. Um, the second hardest part was mounting or getting the wire through the um, firewall. A lot difficult. <laughs> that was a little more difficult than it really needed to be. But I mean, honestly, if I could get it to work, I think anybody can get it to work. Some other updates I wanted to go over on the Forerunner as well is the rack that I recently just got. I now have that um, 4x4 Colorado rack accessory so I can mount boxes to it such as that. Um, and if you guys remember on my old video with the eye camper, that's just the box that was up there. It's just now on this rack. And it was a lot easier than I saw on this one because the eye camper one had custom washers that you needed to get and did not have that. But yeah, this was a pretty simple install. And yeah, I think it looks great. Those are a couple of updates. Interior mounting panels on both sides. I searched out the Jackery with the EcoFlow and it sits at the same spot. And then um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think one of these days I'm actually going to do an update on the Forerunner because I did a overview of all the parts that I got, but Quite a few things have changed since that video, um, which is crazy because that was maybe like eight months ago. Still adding a bunch of stuff to it, still buying some parts. I think eventually where the build is going to be finished, bumper, winch, skids, and for the most part, I think that might be the build. Um, I don't think I want to do any more than that. And I think for rear bumper wise, as um, there's not much going on with the bumper, what I might end up doing is buying one of those hitch bumpers like from Rigged or Wilco. It's those hitch mounts. Um, I might end up just doing that. But yeah, I think that might be the whole entire build. So it's almost done. There is actually one more thing I wanted to go over. And that is my desk setup when I am not at home and I'm working on the road. 
So I have a desk now that just sits up in the front seat. All right, to give you guys an idea, if I were to close the door, there's that much room between the desk and then this slides up forward and the laptop sits right here. And so I have that. And then this is what I use as a second monitor. Sometimes I use this as a second monitor um, just in case I'm working out on the road. And it's uh, pretty comfortable. And th this is adjustable. It's also height adjustable as well. So what I plan on doing a little later is moving this up to the top here and then have the keyboard just sit on my lap. That way uh, it doesn't mess with my posture. But yeah, let me get out, kind of show you what it looks like. So it will look a lot like that. And it mounts to the seat of the car. So um, it's kind of like the Ram mount. But yeah, there's just this plate. Now, if you guys are interested, I'll link this below, but uh, super convenient. It actually makes working on the road a lot more enjoyable. Now that I think the sun is starting to go down, I'm gonna legitimately grab some photos and edit some photos. And I'll show you everything from there. I got a message from a friend, Jeremy, that said to head out and catch the reflections during sunset in the area that I'm in. Gonna dip out, going to catch some other shots. Thanks for the heads up, Jeremy. So it's the next morning, I hopped into the car because it was, uh, for lack of a better word, it was cold as shit last night. I also left my camera outside I'm shooting the Milky Way that went actually across this whole horizon right behind me and so wanted to see the results so here's some of the I don't know if you can see this but um, so it turned out pretty good I mean still needing to do some editing but um, yeah I mean it turned out pretty well the plan for today after I do some of these edits and then um, check out some of the time lapse that I got is to head into Ben, go into a place called Thump Grocery Bakery, and then head over into Expo. Unfortunately, I didn't do too much filming on the second day of the Expo. I was more focused on the event itself, networking, meeting people, and overall looking for new innovations. If you guys ever attend the Overland Expo, you know it could be overwhelming with all the builds and the gears shown. I wanted to give a couple shout outs to uh, Blaine and Devin over at 4x4 Colorado, um, the folks over at Cali Rays, Brian at Bushwacka, and um, everyone at Hess. Also, all the van builders out there. I'm entertaining the idea of van life, but I need quite a bit of information before I jump right into it. So it was super helpful to pick all of their builders' brains at the expo and kind of get some second opinions on some things before I totally jump right into it. Overall, Overland Expo was a uh, great experience. I got to see a lot of cool builds and and gather a ton of inspiration for my own Forerunner. The workshops and demos were super informative. Uh, met a lot of amazing people there as well who will also share the same passion for overlanding. But yeah, if you're ever into overlanding or just curious about it, I highly recommend checking out one of these expos. It's not just about gear and the vehicles, it's about the community and the adventure as well. So that was Overland Expo. Um, had such a great time going over there just to uh, talk to the people that um, you know share the same interests and stuff. But yeah, got to see a couple vendors, got to see all the deals, a lot of stuff that I was wanting to buy. That I'm just like, you know, I can't be spending money like that because uh, yeah, you go broke. If you guys ever do get a chance to go to Overland Expo, whether it's PNW um, West or East or anything, um, do go there. It's uh, fun. You don't have to buy anything, but. Being able to talk to some people, meet the people that actually like enjoy being outside, enjoy overlanding. Yeah, it's it's fun. There's a lot of photographers over there that I saw. Now that that's over, I can kind of start exploring a little uh, some of the areas that I've always wanted to explore, which is like near Bend because I don't come here very often. So, spot that I'm going into is a place called Crack in the Ground, and 
it's literally quite what it sounds like. It's a crack in the ground. And if you guys are familiar with, um, let's say like Zion National Park, it reminds me a little bit like that. Personally, I have never been there, so definitely gonna check that out and um, see how it is. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right, so we made it to crack in the ground and I'm gonna be honest with you, that was one of the worst washboard roads that I've ever driven on. made it to crack in the ground i wasn't joking when i said i was going to a place called crack in the ground it seemed like a mile in that when i was flying my drone it gets a lot greener on the other side like no pun intended but i'm interested to see what it looks like on the other side where it's just all green and there's like grass inside because where I went, it's just all rocks. Um, but yeah, those walls are coming in. I was getting a little claustrophobic and it is getting windy and it is starting to rain a little bit. So I think I, think I might head out. It depends on when I get to the car. Okay, another change of plans. Um, if you ever noticed, I'm like really indecisive. Um, I am, I don't know if you can see it, I hope you can but i am right there where the blue dot is down south is where tabletop mountain is and then over here is where a hole in the wall is i think i'm gonna go to hole in the wall just because i am headed back towards like bend area and then um it's a quicker drive in the morning rather than if i went down south to tabletop mountain the drive up is a lot longer um and i rather drive up closer in the morning rather than arrive at camp early, if that makes sense. So you guys probably can't tell, but there is a giant hole in the ground right here. I'm kind of excited to see what this place looks like in the morning. Set everything up. It's uh, pretty late, so I'm just actually going to head straight to bed. So I'll see you tomorrow morning. Here, to give you guys an idea of what I mean about hole in the ground, uh, it looks like this. It's just a giant hole in the ground. It kind of reminds me of that scene from Thor where his hammer fell like right in this area and everyone's just like circling around trying to pick it up. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then as yesterday, I highly doubt you guys could see the road, but this is quite literally the road to get here. And as for yesterday, I was like, kind of reluctant to park here because it was literally off the side of the road i guess uh update you guys on the plan dude these mosquitoes are crazy down here um to update you on the plan i'm gonna take the longer route and grow, go up i-5 i feel like going on an interstate highway is always going to be faster i don't know i might eat my words there but yeah that's the plan so let's uh head out i'm gonna steal another one of these these are the patches that i got i think i'm gonna end up going with this one because it's for one a different color than what i have right now which is not a whole lot um and it's a forerunner so let's put this under the forerunner lifestyle But yeah, so this is gonna wrap up the entire video. The whole two days that I spent at Overland Expo was such a great time. Um, meeting a lot of the people that I've always wanted to meet. Some people met me. Getting to see all the vendors, all the new gear, the innovation, all that stuff that happens at Overland Expo or you can only get at Overland Expo. But yeah, it was such a great time. Um, 
if you guys ever do get a chance to go to an expo to meet some of the people that make the gears that you use, I mean, definitely go out and talk to them, go and meet them, like they're super great. Like I met the people at Cali Rays, for an example, uh, those guys are great. 4x4 Colorado, I got to meet a lot of those guys. And uh, Bushwhacker, so the people that made the awning, my awning. Um, but yeah, and just in general, being in Bend, Oregon and Redmond area, like sisters and all that stuff, such a cool place to hang out. What I'm trying to get at is that wraps up the entire video, so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys do have any questions about anything at all, if you guys ever wanted to get a hold of me, I would say Instagram is the best. I'm more responsive over there, so, but yeah, feel free to hit me up. All right, take care, guys.